Right, before I get too, in, too much detail into installing this and showing you how it gets installed, I'm just going to talk about the first toy that's going to go in. And this is the 48 port Unify PoE 500 watt switch. And I think that's, I think the technical uh, actual model name is US 48500W. Um, pretty heavy. I'm not gonna lie, it's probably gonna be really awkward to mount because you have to kind of hold it in and get it in. So I picked this, not necessary one for, I don't really need 48 ports, but I probably will blow past 24 at some point. So it saves me putting two switches in. Um, I'm not gonna use 500 watts of PoE, very unlikely, so any, at least anyway. Um, the main reason is actually the SPF Plus, um, which is a 10G uplink or uh, you know, a switching port. And that was, that was the main reason, to be honest with you. Um, frustratingly, right now, the, the smaller switches from Unify um, don't have SPF plus ports, which is a 10G port, so you have SPF ports. Uh, so S, sorry, let me say that wrong. S, SFP, my apologies. Um, so, whilst you can aggregate two ports together, you'll never actually go past, you can, I think you can aggregate up to six on the Unify switches. There's a limit, there's an upper limit, I can't remember what it is, it's between, it's either four or six, it's the maximum. Either way, um, what, whilst that will distribute packets across the two, you'll never have a single stream faster than the, the, the single link speed, so I can have four cables aggregated together between, say, the router and the uh, um, opportune two switches, but you'll never actually blow past um, a single gig, a single stream going faster than one gigabit. So to get one, to get 10G upload, to say if I plug another a 10G switch in, um, you actually have to have 10G uh, uplink, actually a physical cable to go that fast, because you, you can't aggregate 10 cables to get, to get 10G on a single connection. You can have 10, one gig connections. Um, so whilst it's good for width, it's not good for single speed. And you say, well, what's the chance of you ever doing that? It's like, well, you know, if I put in a very really fast disk SAN server, you know, a, a network drive for servers, um, you know, it is, it is pretty possible for it to go past 100 megabits a second. You know, SSDs can do 300, 400 megabits a second. So um, you would never be able to get the maximum performance from one gigabit connection. That's why I watch the 10G. Uh, this is a very long roundabout explanation. I'm sure someone can explain it much better than me. Um, but literally, the reason I went to the bigger switch is for 10G. Um, but yeah, so let's get on with installing it. All right, I'm going to try and give you give you as good view as possible. Um, but this is heavy, so I'm not quite sure how well I'm going to do without me kind of fumbling around in front of this. So let's get some screws ready to mount. In the holes. Uh, oh, anyone that's just wondering, because sometimes it's not very clear. Console port on the back, power on the back. And this is the older the level two switch from U Unify, so actually there's, a, there's no interchangeable power supply. Uh, but the new ones coming out soon will. Cable management I was talking about from earlier, you know, you run cables into it and along and down. Um, for this one, it's going to be pretty simple, one to one. Uh, number one on the left hand side of my patch panel, that's that's incoming from my Sentry Link ONT, which is an optical network terminal sitting on the outside of the house. Um, and I just have a bunch of these beautiful ca patch cables, and you get to watch me patch everything up. Alright, um, because for some strange reason I'm an idiot and I, uh, I only ordered eight of those orange patch cables. Um, I don't know why, and maybe maybe they already got the order wrong. Um, I think I think that's me. I think I only ordered eight for some strange reason. Um, I know what someone's going to say. It's like, hey man, you should be using shorter patch cables to go that short distance. You are one hundred percent correct. I probably should be using shorter patch cables. Um, 
and maybe I'll come back and redo some of this so like these ones to ones here clearly can be about half the size <laughs> um, you know and then and then I'll uh, neaten things up so like these these orange ones can go from here to over here pretty easily but from there to there it doesn't make sense I'm hoping the front of this still goes on it kind of loops hooks into all of this so it should hold that in um, but for now though, I do have some longer patch cables which is probably going to look pretty dumb It's going to come out here, probably sit out the side here and then go back again But, you know, this is a learning experience um, So let's grab those blue patch cables Yeah, and also these patch cables are a different colour Which is also why I was kind of hesitant, I wanted to keep everything the same colour So there's kind of good tips in networking is that Trying group colours um, so I've got some blue cables here. So try and group colours. Um, let's see, let's see so try and group colours by uh, what they're doing or where they're coming from. So um, I was trying to keep orange as kind of um, like going out to places. So uh, you know, like to, you know, to, to the house, to the switch. You know, basically switching ports. Nothing special. And then I'm going to keep blue as stuff coming in and out. Um, so like uplinks and blue and black is going to be uplinks and other stuff. Um, so yeah, just you know, make sense for yourself later. So you can look at if you have a more complicated patch panel than this, you can go like, uh, you know, if you have like twelve different colours, you're going to be like, well, what the hell is everything doing? But if you've got consistent colours across everything. And you go, oh, okay, that must be uplinks, that must be going out to the switches, they must be, you know, on, and if you're using fibre as well, I very much recommend you have a different colour for your fibre, so someone looks at a switch and you're like, oh, okay, that bright white must be fibre or something like that. Something like that. It's up to you. As far as I'm aware, there's no kind of industry standard for colours, it's just whatever you prefer. And as long as it makes sense in your cabling and data centre, you do what you want, as long as everyone else is on board. That's better. It's not perfect, but it is better. Um, yeah, so I definitely need some short, short cables go from here. These are, um, for reference, these orange ones are 0.3 meters. Um, to 30 centimeters and this is something I actually really struggle with in ordering cables because uh, you know I'm trying to trying to like Google and read on forums about how people do this and um, there's no real no one's there's no real calculation for how long cables need to be you know if I'm going from one year to one year there's no real um, numbers that people go oh you know it takes X distance to go from one use to another use so if you're going from four use you you do X times X X times Y, um, but it's coming a bit clearer now that I guess a 15 centimeter cable, so 0.15 meter cable, which is half the distance of this, would actually be almost exactly the right size to go from there to there as a straight pass through. Um, so I think I'm going to order some of those, and then you, and then we'll find out whether that's actually the case. Um, and then these blue ones seem like they will have to do from here down, you know, down out the side down to you and then pretty much anywhere and these are oh I can't remember how long these are I might say on it uh, I have a feeling these are half meters I'm pretty sure these are halves so 50 centimeters or three foot I think no that's not right <laughs> it's a problem when you live in an imperial country come from a metric company country I'm still working out the difference in sizes um, all right let's need to know All right, not as nice as I like it, but that's the whole point of this. So I'll do a quick demo. This thing, literally, I think it just clips on. He says, not actually trying it before recording it, making himself look like an idiot. Oh, there you go. I was right. It just clips on. So it, it is just a clip. So if your cables are already pushing against this, it probably will push it off. But I mean, come on. I mean, that looks. 
this is a bit stupid, but that's my fault, I need to get short cables. But I look significantly neater then, uh, just having cables dangling around everywhere. Um, and these things, yeah, these things are great, they're pretty cheap too, and I would seriously recommend it. So, you know, the beautiful thing is that this uplink is going to go from this one into here, all the way along here, outside, through some finger, some vertical fingers like on the back of the rack, into my, along another one, which is going to be here. And then into the uplink, actually the uplinks on one end of the switch, I can't remember. Um, so really, on the front of it, you only see the cables and lights, what you want to see. And then on the, and then everything's hidden in between. So you can still read numbers, you know, through the top of that easily. I can still see the numbers on this pretty easily. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, that's the end of the switch install. I'm going to come back and move on to the router install, which is cool because it's, it's the USG XG8, which is not being seen in the wild too much yet. Um, Alright, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.